joins us, Director of the Freight and Trade Alliance. Paul, good afternoon. Yeah, hi, Raph. How are you? We any closer to understanding what happened? Yeah, look, um, we've been working pretty closely with SCT and we've got some preliminary details. So what we understand is um, uh, their regular train um, left Adelaide about four o'clock yesterday afternoon heading uh, destined for Altona. Uh, it derailed at about 5.30 a.m. this morning, west of Geelong, between Iberley and Duringap. Um, very importantly and gratefully, no staff were injured. And, um, and quite incredibly, the locomotive somehow remained upright on the track. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, as you described, uh, many of the wagons uh, have been derailed. Uh, SCT and also the Australian Rail Track Corporation and other regulatory bodies are on site um, doing their assessments as we speak. How, how often does it happen that the thing at the front of the train, the engine, is fine and all the stuff after it fell off? How did that happen? Ah, uh, you would have to speak to some engineers on that. I don't know how that, that managed to uh, happen, but, you know, I, I think that it's still a horrible accident and it's still going to be a significant issue, but I think that's going to take some of the pain out of the recovery um, that the um, that the locomotives were okay. But how that how that happened, um, I'm, I'm not in a position to answer that. And I'm assuming everything in the containers is ruined? Do we know? Look, not sure at this stage. And again, obviously, it's going to depend on what the commodities are that were in there. Um, and that's all still being assessed at the moment. But yeah, you would imagine there would be some loss and damage in the mix of it. How long to clean it up? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. So the main line uh, track is currently closed. Um, we are expecting regular communications, but we're not going to get another formal update until around about this time tomorrow afternoon. When was the last time a freight train derailed like this? Do you know? Well, we haven't seen anything of this uh, magnitude for a while. I, I know in New South Wales, with the rains that we've had there, um, we've had a lot of landslides and the like, which have actually blocked um, uh, the rail and caused enough disruption, that even with that, without having a derailment. Uh, but to have an actual derailment is not a, not a common occurrence at all. Even when you cast your mind back to February, uh, this year, when we had the, the massive rains in South Australia, which affected the east-west uh, there, we didn't have um, a derailment there, but we just had enough extreme weather conditions to, you know, to cause a major disruption then. How much, like, each day, how much stuff goes on that, on that freight track? How, for how long? What sort of backlog are you going to get? If you don't have it for a week, what does the backlog look like? Yeah, look, I think... If, you would, if this would have happened maybe one or two years ago or longer, we, we probably would have suffered more. I think with the fact that we've had such bad weather conditions and these type of disruptions, plus all the issues affecting global supply chains, I think the one thing that sort of works to our favour is that we've moved away from a reliance and an expectation on just-in-time deliveries. And um, a lot of um, our retailers, grocery stores and the others are warehousing uh, essential products right. and sort of preparing more for a, um, a just-in-case rather than just-in-time environment. So it is that has other costs. That means, you know, warehouses are filling up and that comes with more cost. But I think it's just a, a reality of these emerging uh, issues that we're facing that that stock on hand is going to be a more and more common thing. Um, obviously, that's not going to help us with such thing as perishables, but we will be reliant on, um, um, on uh, you know, the timely delivery. But I urge all your listeners not to rush out and buy uh, toilet paper. I think we should be okay. And how many people normally drive a train like that? Is it one person or more than one? No, I think you've normally got a couple of people there. Um, and, um, yeah, but again, as we said, you know, we're incredibly grateful yeah. that, although we've got the inconvenience, we've got no injuries or loss of life. And I hope this isn't too ignorant. The engine's at the front of the train or is the engine at the back? Uh, at the front. At the front, right. And so that both the drivers would be at the front or both of the people in control yeah. would be at the front? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, and we don't know, no idea how long? We don't know how long. Hopefully we get some relief. And again, I suppose the only good thing about all the disasters we've been facing is that we're getting good at um, contingency procedures. So um, when we had the major issues east-west um, uh, back in February, we had a situation there where the, the previous federal government relaxed some of the international shipping rules and allowed the... Um, the foreign-owned shipping lines to carry containerised cargoes around our coast. Um, so 
But we're not we're not going to have that luxury this time, or maybe not, because on top of the the rail derailment, we've now got a situation where the unions and the employers of our major tug operator Spitzer are in dispute, and Spitzer uh, put out a notice earlier today that they're going to be locking out all of their staff yeah. uh, come this Friday. So yeah, we might. I hate the pun, but we might have a perfect storm. God, grim. Thank you, though, Paul. Appreciate.